Hey everybody, before we jump into this video tutorial, I just need to take a moment and remember my wife's grandfather, in fact, my grandfather, who passed away this past Sunday, January 29th of 2017. He was 91 years old. He was a good man that loved his family. He adored his wife. He loved this country. He fought in World War II in the Pacific Theater. Um, just a great guy, and we're all going to miss him uh, a whole bunch. Hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating this watercolor text effect in Photoshop. It's completely hand painted. We do use a font kind of as a little bit of a help and a guide, but it's a really, really cool effect. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Now, before we get going, I want to let you guys know I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com. It's all about how to retouch photos. If you use Photoshop, you're going to learn so much through that course. And by picking up the course, you help support what I'm doing here. So you pick up the course, it allows me to keep spending more time cranking out these videos as we push this thing bigger and bigger and better and better every single day. And this year is only just getting started. So let's go ahead and jump into this video tutorial and take a look at this watercolor text effect. You can see it right here. Um, now, these watercolor brushes are available online for free. I'll have a link down in the description of this video so you can go ahead and download them and follow along with the exact brushes that I'm using um, in this tutorial. I'll also link up the texture uh, that was used here on the background and all I did was, you know, threw the texture over like a cream buttery colored a solid color fill layer. There's the texture set to multiply and an opacity of 20%. Very simple background. I painted some watercolors uh, onto that background as well. I'll show you how I do that as we progress through. The other important thing is the color scheme. Where did I get the color scheme from? Well, let me show you. There's this website called Coolers. Um, and the cool thing about this website is when you launch the color generator, you just hit the spacebar key and it generates a new uh, color scheme for you. And let's say when you're flipping through it, you say, oh, you know what? I really like this silver color. You can lock that color and hit the spacebar again. It's going to maintain that color and keep searching for four other colors that work in unison with that color. You can lock as many colors as you want and build the perfect color scheme. And the way that I bring it into Photoshop, just quick and dirty, export, and I export a PNG. And then I just like right click. Well, when, when it can find the, uh, when it can find the image. Let's try that again. Well, it appears that their uh, server is down just in time for me to uh, record this. Uh, but usually you get a little PNG image. You can right click on it, copy the image, and then just paste it right into your Photoshop document. And then you can just use your uh, use your eyedropper tool here and quickly sample from any of the colors. So that's how I got this little color scheme that we're going to be using uh, today. But feel free to use your own color scheme or try to mimic this one. And whatever way you go about it, it's probably going to work just fine. Um, I'm going to just group these layers up. Command or Control G. I'm going to call this a ridge for original and just hide it and now we're working here over the background so the first step is to just create some text I'm gonna grab the text tool and I'm going to open up my character panel here and what I want to do is use the uh, the typeface Latin modern right here this Latin modern Roman a demi bold font uh, at a size of 300 points is probably gonna be about right uh, and I'm gonna drag the character panel back over here we can really type it out in any color we want I'm gonna just set my color of uh, text color to black just so we can see it and then I'm just going to click once and I'm going to type out the word uh, water color there we go and then that's just command return control enter to commit that change grab your move tool let's bring it down here to the middle of our document something like that and by the way it snapped to the middle of the document because up here under view I have show smart guides turned on it gives me those little helpful heads up displays those little guidelines and everything as I'm moving things around super duper helpful now, a very important thing that we want to do here with our text layer is, well, first and foremost, in the character panel, I have just all caps ticked on. This way, even though I didn't type all these letters out as capital letters, you can see I just wrote watercolor. When I turn on all caps, you can see it's just all capital letters. So that's the first thing. Uh, next up, if you double click out here on the layer, it's going to open up your layer styles dialog box. And we want to make sure we uncheck blend clipped layers as group. We need to uncheck that and then set the fill opacity to zero. Look at that. Our letters just disappeared. Hit OK. And what we can do now is create a new layer on top of this. And we'll call this layer watercolor. So I'm going to go watercolor. Great. And I'm going to clip it to the layer beneath using the hotkey Command Option G. That's Control Alt G on the PC. It is on this layer that we're going to go ahead and paint our colors. Now, normally, if we didn't check this blend clip layers as a group off, 
when we go ahead and paint on this layer, and if I just grab my brush tool and I begin painting here, let me make the brush tool quite a bit larger. Well, not that large. Uh, you can see that even as I paint, there's black paint being laid down, but I'm not seeing any of it because we're blending these clipped layers. So if I uncheck this and hit OK, you can see that the uh, the contents of this layer appear. So that's why that's so important. I'm just going to select all and delete to get rid of the contents of that because we need to load in our watercolor brushes. Now, like I said, there's a link to these watercolor brushes down in the description of the video. I'm going to hit, I just right clicked, hit my little flyout menu, choose replace brushes, and I'm going to choose my watercolor brushes. I believe this is the exact brush pack you're going to be downloading. Uh, and we're just going to begin pretty simple here. Let's go with the first brush. And I'm going to set the size to maybe like 750. Let's look to see what that looks like. That's pretty good. And we'll select, we'll, we'll kind of go with the flow here of our, uh, our color scheme. So we'll begin with our blue and we'll just kind of move right to the right. So let's hold down our alter option key and just select that blue. And I'm going to leave everything about the brush kind of to default. The mode to normal, opacity and flow at 100%. Um, all of that is good. And I'm just going to begin clicking. So I click once, click twice, three times. I just click around a few times and then hold down alter option, grab the pink. Let's click with the pink a few times, start intensifying things a little bit. Let's go with this kind of like pale pink color. We'll add some of that to the middle. Let's go with this kind of greenish yellow and we'll go with our more aqua blue, which is actually quite hard to read. So I'm going to flood that into here. And then it's just a, a matter of mixing the colors a little bit. So because uh, just because of the way these watercolor brushes work, uh, as you paint over different colors, you sort of uh, allow those colors to mix a little bit. Like you can see when I'm painting with this magenta over the yellow, I'm almost getting this peachy orange color, uh, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to select that yellow again. We're going to make sure the yellow is still strong. Bring some of the yellow up underneath there and maybe a little bit of the yellow down there on top of the R. Let's go back to the pale pink color. I'm going to intensify some of the colors coming up through there. Great. Go back to this. Get some of this blue involved here to intensify that tealish color. Bring some of that blue in there and there. And you know, just keep just keep messing around with it. I'm gonna make my brush size a little bit smaller here. I'm gonna bring some of the pale pink in on the bottom. Ooh, that actually looks really bad right there. Maybe let's go with a brighter pink, something like that. I mean, it definitely gives it more of a tropical, you know, hand painted vibe. I like that a lot more. Cool. And you know, you can go over this as much or as little as you like to really build up your watercolor effect. You can see it's very colorful, very light, very watercolory feeling. It's really, really cool. So now to make this pop a little bit here on our background, let's go down to the text layer and we've only reduced the fill opacity. So we can add layer styles to this and we're still going to see those layer styles applied. Uh, so I'm going to double click here on the text layer and I'm going to begin with just a very simple drop shadow here. So I'm going to go with drop shadow. I'm going to set it to... I think we should try overlay because of the background, which we're over. I really need the drop shadow to be subtle, almost to something that just makes the text pop a little bit. You set the color to about 50% or so. Uh, and four for distance looks fine. Uh, maybe make the size a little bit less. The size is essentially the blur of the drop shadow. So we're not making it smaller per se. We're making it a little, a little bit shorter, but more intense. Um, so a little bit of a harder edged shadow that looks good. Um, and let's also do a very subtle bevel and emboss. So I'm going to go bevel and emboss, chisel hard, great. Uh, a depth of, let's pump the depth up a little bit. It's almost like the edge contrast, if you will. 500% looks great. Uh, size is a little bit big. Let's knock it down to like two. And then we're going to set the angle here to 90 degrees. So the, the highlights are going to be on the very top. The shadows are going to be on the very bottom, as long as we have the direction set to up. Uh, an altitude of 50 is probably fine. You can mess around, make that a little bit lower, maybe 30, uh, something like that. You're not going to notice a massive difference with this particular case. Um, and then we're going to set the highlight mode to screen and we'll reduce the opacity of this uh, to about 20, 25. I'll, I'll just leave it at 20%, whatever I was working on before. That looks perfect. Uh, and then we're going to set the shadow mode to multiply and I need to drop the opacity way down, maybe like to 15% here. I really want the shadow to be light. I don't want it to be something that's very, very heavy. So it's a very slight outline. It's almost as if like it's a pencil outline on the bottom of our letters. I kind of dig it. Go ahead and hit OK. And you can see we just have those subtle uh, layer styles. If I shut them off, there's, there it is before, there's after. So just a nice subtle effect there. Uh, I think that really works for us. Let's create a layer beneath our text. So hold down your Command or Control key and click New Layer. And we're going to call this uh, Watercolor uh, Background. And what I want to do is right click and we're going to choose a couple of the more subtle watercolor brushes. So maybe I'll go with like this guy right here. And actually at this big size, it's probably good. I'm going to hold down my alter option key and sample this blue. And we're basically going to click once with each of these colors and move across our document, but with different watercolor brushes. So we'll begin with this watercolor brush 
and I'll just click once. And if it looks like it's too big, I'll just undo. I can right click and maybe set this to something like 1800 instead. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. There we go. So one with the blue. We're going to right click. Let's go with like this one here. And we'll set this one to 1800 as well. Great. I'm going to hold on my alter option key. Select that like magenta pink. There we go. Great. Right click. Let's go with maybe this guy right here. Set this to 1800. Go ahead and sample that pale pink. There we go. Right click. And let's, let's grab this guy right down here. Kind of looks interesting. 1800 we're gonna go with yellow now because the yellow is so light you might want to click twice just to make sure you really get some in there uh, and then right click and let's choose I don't know let's choose the second one here and again we'll go 1800 on the size and we'll just sample that really light teal and again that one might be one you want to click twice just to really make sure you get it uh, to show up a little bit now if the if the letters are blending in a little bit too much we can really bring out the contrast and intensify everything using like a color balance adjustment layer so go color balance and let's just choose to pump some yellows into this and maybe some reds as well just a kiss of magenta and we'll go to the highlights and we'll do the same thing pump some yellows into it pump some reds just a little bit of magenta and then set this layer to the blend mode of multiply and you can see it gives us this very very rich color it really helps all the colors pop and that's probably a bit too much so you can just use your opacity slider and dial it in to just the perfect amount something like that so you can see just doing that really helps add contrast and build out our effect and really really make it look uh, pretty cool now, if you wanted to do one more thing, you could take the watercolor background because we start with kind of the same bluish purple that we have in the letters. We could just flip this entire thing by hitting Command or Control T, right click on that and choose Flip Horizontal. And you can see it's gonna place more of the teal on this side, going to the blues and purples over here. We can commit that change and you can roll with something like that. Uh, the whole point is you have a lot of flexibility at this point though. I could take watercolor and make this, um, I don't know, video or something like that. And because it's this text uh, to which our watercolors are being clipped, we can take it and we can kind of drag it wherever. I actually should probably open my paragraph panel and just center align my text. Drag it right here to the middle of the document so we can go video or we can just say, you know, water or we can say, you know, vacation or whatever you want. And you have a text that's very editable and text that just kind of is moving and flowing here with the watercolor pattern which we've painted on top of it. So it's pretty simple. It's pretty effective. And that's how I go about creating this sort of custom watercolor text effect in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you leave a little like on this video. Slap a comment on it if you feel so inclined. Hit the subscribe button as well. That way you never miss another video in the future. How awesome is that? For creating a watercolor text effect in Photoshop, custom watercolor brushes over our own texturized background. Can you believe it? That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.